I'm so excited right now because guess what I just did? I just signed up for Spanish lessons and I'm excited because well, I don't know why I didn't do this sooner actually. I've been sitting on it for a while, but I'm excited because this means that I won't be sitting at the dinner table when I'm with my boyfriend and his family because, and not knowing what anyone's saying, I will actually be able to participate in the conversations. And next time I go to Costa Rica, I'll be able to actually talk to people and know what's going on around me. So I'm really excited. And I don't know if there's anything that you've been sitting on for a while or like if you've ever sat on something and then you did it and you're like, why didn't I do this sooner? Because that's exactly how I'm feeling right now. And it's how I felt before I hired my fitness coach the first time. Just, I don't know. It's just such a, it, it seems like a little step to probably other people. But like, to me, it's just, it's those little baby steps, those things that you do that turn into giant leaps. And you're like, why the hell didn't I do this sooner? So anyways, super excited about that. And Today we're going to be talking about macros and I was pouring coffee this morning and I was thinking about the very, like right when I started getting into macros, the amount of protein, fat and carbs that your body needs individually every single day. And I was in Maine visiting my grandmother. This was hmm, 2015, 2016. She passed away a couple years later, but it's one of the last times I was at her house. And I just remember I was feeling so good in my body and so excited because for the very first time, you know, I discovered macros and I started tracking my food on my fitness pal and I was so excited because for the first time I felt like I had some freedom when it came to food and I was no longer trying to not eat certain things because I thought that they were bad or they weren't going to help me achieve my goals it was the very first time that I was like oh my gosh I'm gonna I can eat all these things and all I need to do is be aware of my macros and the calories and I felt so free in that sense. And I, I'll never forget that feeling because it was the very first time that I had actually found some sort of sense of food freedom because for years I had always struggled with body image and my weight. And it was, I just, I, it, I remember this moment so well because I not only like I just felt so free with food but then I was also at my grandma's house and it was like so homey and I like woke up and I was drinking coffee in bed like looking out it was snowing and we were getting ready to go to the gym that morning I remember and I just started eating chicken um, because for years I was vegetarian and I remember too I was like you know tracking my macros I'm like okay I need more protein so I called Whole Foods in Portland Maine and I'm like hey just one wondering if you guys sell grass-fed chicken and the guy on the phone was like he like was silent for a second and he's like ma'am chickens don't eat grass <laughs> because I was trying to be healthy and like I I mean even to this day I only buy like free-range chicken um but yeah I'll always remember that so it was like this string of events that just kind of was the very beginning of me really taking my fitness into my own hands and doing it in a way where I had food freedom and I felt really good in my body and my mind because, you know, when you feel good in your mind and what you're doing and you have a sense of freedom and control, you feel good in your body. It's just, they work together, right? So I'm excited to answer your guys' questions today. And on that note, if you haven't yet checked out the Inspiration Library, it has a bunch of like different meal plans and guides and things to help you keep your blood sugar stable. And if you're on the journey to lose weight, specifically, these meal guides are macro friendly and weight loss friendly, and they're all in the inspiration library. So if you want to check it out, it's free to join. Just go to 
tajacato.com forward slash inspiration. I'll also link to that in the show notes. And if you are, if you enjoyed this episode today, if it inspires you in some way, please do take a second to rate and review this podcast. You can do so by scrolling down on your device, tapping the stars to rate the podcast, and then clicking to leave a quick review and let me know what you enjoy most about this episode or what you enjoy most about listening to this podcast. It would really mean the world if you did take a second to do that because when you take the time to rate and review this podcast, it's it's really how this this show has grown, you guys. And it means so much because so many people out there like they find this show because you have taken the time to rate and review this podcast. So thank you so much if you already have done that and If you do take a second to do that, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you so much. And if you have not yet subscribed to this podcast, please take a second to subscribe because that way you won't miss out on any of our upcoming episodes or bonus content. All right, let's go ahead and dive into this episode today. Welcome to the More Than Just a Type podcast, a place where we explore what it takes to live your best life. I'm your host, Taja Cato, expert in type 1 diabetes and fat loss, entrepreneur, and lover of all things fitness and personal development. Each week, we'll bring you a tangible tool, tip, or insight that'll inspire you and empower you to take action, achieve your goals, and live your best life. So today we are going to be talking macros and I'm going to be answering some of your questions when it comes to counting macros and diabetes. I'm super excited to dive into this episode today because macros are something that have really changed my life and I'll just kind of tell you a backstory quickly, um, as quick as I can, but I, my whole entire goal, my, my goal, my whole entire life was to lose weight. I felt like diabetes was the reason that I couldn't lose weight. And I tried all of these different diets. I just, I really trashed my body to be honest. And it wasn't until I found, cause I was, I have the mindset of like, go all in. You're either all in or you're all out. You're going hard or you're not. Like there's no in between. And so counting macros actually brought a lot more balance into my life. I also have the kind of personality that I like structure. I don't have a problem with tracking my food intake because it gives me control. Because in the past, (laughs) I would get into these diet swings where I would either be like not eating food or I'd be eating too much food and then like binging and just, there was just, I, yeah, it's just the mentality and you might be able to relate to this. And so it kind of gave me control back of my life because even when I wasn't eating a lot of food, I felt like I had control because I was like, yeah, I'm not eating. Like I just like anything I could do to give me more control. And I think part of it too is because I felt so out of control of my body because I had type one diabetes that I having that bit of control where I felt like I was, you know, doing, I I just, it was like a mindset control thing where I like felt like I was getting to where I wanted to be. That structure had really, it like helps me mentally, if that makes sense. Now counting macros isn't for anyone by all means. Some people do better intuitive eating, not tracking. There's so many different ways to do it. But the reason why I'm sharing this is because counting macros helped me and it actually gave me a lot more freedom in how, in the way that I viewed food and it rebuilt my relationship with food because for so many years I had a really unhealthy relationship with food because of my all in all out mentality. And I, when I was eating very little food, I wasn't achieving my weight loss goal. And so it actually made me scared of food. I had this huge fear of food and I would, I was, I was that girl that I would hide food. Like I would rather eat alone. So I didn't have, so my mom didn't see me eating food because I was so ashamed that like 
I'm barely eating anything and I'm still not achieving my goal and like why? So I associated to food as something that was bad rather than fuel for my body because I didn't know back then how to properly fuel my body. I did not have that knowledge and so counting macros helped me. Like I dove into it. I studied everything that I could know about macros and diabetes and when it comes to your body, you're constantly learning about it, right? Like as you age, as you grow, even with like, especially with type one diabetes, even diabetes, right? Like having an autoimmune disease, it's like your body's constantly changing and it's a constant learning curve that you just have to ebb and flow with. And so I, I feel like it's something that I'm always going to be learning about, which is fun too. And everyone's, you know, I have clients that are completely different in terms of like what their body needs because we're all made up so differently. So counting macros did give me that, um, just it turned my mindset from a rigid, like this is bad, this is good. It turned my mindset into a more flexible so I can have a flexible approach with nutrition because when it comes to food, it's like, yeah, maybe if you're eating donuts all day, like that's not going to be very optimal in the long term. But when it comes to like the amount of calories that's in a donut versus like an apple or maybe that's not a good analogy, but when it comes to like, you know, something that's really healthy and then something that's quote unquote unhealthy, and I'm putting that in quotations if you're just listening to the audio, um, it, it doesn't matter. Like your body it just sees food as calories. And so it's like calories in calories out. And that, that gave me so much freedom with the foods that I was eating. Cause it's like, Oh, I can go out with friends and I can eat pasta and I don't have to feel like I'm ruining my diet because as long as I'm tracking my macros and my calories, I'm still on the right track. And it gave me so, and it gave me this insight that I didn't have before. So I didn't have to feel bad about what I was eating. I didn't have to have that food guilt where that led me to binge and purging, right? Because I, I understood food in a way that I didn't before and I understood my body and so that's why macros changed my life and it I remember at the very beginning too because my boyfriend super into fitness he's the one that really like I, I think I met him at a time that I needed him most because he transformed like he was already in that world and so I think you'll find when you dive in or if you have like already dove into the world of fitness and nutrition it's like you you learn things from people that are in your circle or like if your boyfriend is a fitness fanatic, then obviously you're going to like be able to ask him questions or vice versa. Right. So it's just, uh, it, it really helped me. And I remember the very first time he set my macros and macros are the amount of protein, fat, and carbs that your body needs every single day to achieve your goals. So whether or not your goal is weight loss, um, to build muscle, to gain weight, to maintain weight, your body requires a certain amount of calories every single day to do that. And when you're counting your macros, macros are the amount of protein, fat, and carbs. It, all of those macros add up to the total amount of calories that your body needs every single day. And so counting macros for me, since I was already all, since I was also already counting my carbs because I was injecting every single day, right? Like for my meals, it was, it was easy for me to just start counting. Well, I shouldn't say easy because it was actually a challenge like to track on my fitness pal in the beginning because I was so busy at work and I just, I felt like I didn't have time to constantly input things. So I actually took a piece of paper and I would just write everything that I ate at, you know, when I was eating, I would just jot it down and then I would input it later. So that helped me kind of get into the hang of it. And then once it's like anything, once you start doing it for a while, once you start inputting your food and tracking your macros, macros, it becomes so much easier. It becomes like injecting insulin. It becomes like second nature. And so when he set my macros for the first time, I remember thinking, oh my God, I cannot eat that much food because I was so scared of food. And at the time I had started kind of playing around with my fitness pal, but I was trying to hit like 1200 calories a day, which, you know, we are, all of our bodies require a different amount of food. I'm five, four, not that height is like a huge deal, but like (laughs) 1200 calories at the time. Let me just tell you way too little food, way too little food. It was not helping me achieve my goals. Your body, you should be able to lose weight eating 
a certain amount of food probably, you know, on the higher end is better, obviously, because your body is going to adapt to that amount of food that you're consuming. And once your body adapts, it's like, what, am I going to eat 900 calories every day and just, and then I'm just going to end up eating air every day? Like, no thanks. Um, but I, yeah, that's why I was just so afraid of food. That's a whole nother rabbit hole we could go down. But when he set my calories, they were really high. And I was like, oh my God, I'm trying to hit 1200 calories today. How am I going to hit however many he had set me, set for me? And so, yeah, it, it took, because I had come from this really unhealthy background and mindset around food, uh, it took me a long time to rebuild that. But it's like anything in life. The more you practice it, the better you get at it. And so it wasn't easy. It didn't happen overnight. But eventually I started understanding and I, I think a big part of it too is like you have to trust the process. When you set your macros and your calories, you have to trust the process and you have to be willing to put in that time, that consistent effort. And yeah, you have you have to trust because otherwise it's going to be really tough mentally and to get to where you want to be. And I'm saying that from experience, but I just wanted to say that. So macros has really, it's changed my life in such a big way. And that's why like my programs are all macro nutrition focused. And, um, yeah, so let's dive in, let's dive into your questions about macros. So, (laughs) um, the very first question was what are macros? So I think I had already answered that, but macros are the amount of food. I mean, the amount of protein, fat, and carbs that your body needs every single day. We all require an individual amount every single day based on, you know, our body weight and all of that kind of jazz. And so it's important that you are, obviously you're eating the proper amount of macros for your body. Um, and the other, okay. So this question has come up so many times. Like I put a star beside it because it, you know, numerous people, had asked this, but higher fat versus higher carbs, which one is better? So this is such an individual question because some people find that their blood sugars do so much better when they're eating lower carb, higher fat. Some people feel their their body feels a lot better. Some people find that it's an easy thing for them to do based on like their lifestyle and what they enjoy eating. They enjoy that diet or not diet. I shouldn't say, but they enjoy that eating that, um, ratio of protein versus fat, or I mean, uh, carb versus fat. Other people find that they love carbs and when they try to eat less carbs and higher fat, they feel like they failed their diet because it's really hard for them to stick to because they love carbs or they just need that a certain amount of carbs to maybe fuel their workouts, to keep their blood sugar stable. So it's such an individual thing depending on what your goal is. And this is my personal opinion. Okay. When it comes to the amount of pro, uh, the amount of fat and the amount of carbs, it's an individual thing. You know, if Susie over here did amazing on keto, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to have the same results. Maybe you will, but it, what it really comes down to is like, what is going to work best with your lifestyle, right? Like, what do you enjoy eating? You have to look at that first. You want to do, you want to eat what is most sustainable for you because otherwise you're not going to stick to it. It's going to be so difficult. You're going to feel like a constant failure and just, it's going to be so challenging, And so that's the most important thing I would look at. And also depending on your activity level, right? Like if you are someone who's constantly out there doing a shit ton of cardio, like you're cycling, you're, you know, going for walks all the time. It's like maybe not saying that you can't eat low carb because lots of people do, like we're all so different, but maybe you might find that you just enjoy eating more carbs. It helps to keep your blood sugar stable while you're out on that bike ride or something, right? Like there's no right or wrong way when it comes to setting your macros. But I will say when it comes to macros, your body does require a minimum amount of fat every single day, which is set at 0.25 grams per pound of body weight. 
But I will say that your body does require a minimum amount of fat every single day in order to keep your hormones balanced. So whether or not you are, you know, you've made the decision to eat a ton of carbs, just make sure that you're eating the minimum amount of fat required for your body. That's super important. And I did do a podcast episode all about nutrition. I think it was more so, I think it was for weight loss, but I'll link to it in the show notes if you want to check it out because we kind of go through setting your macros in that. Um, so yeah, so it's really a personal thing. And um, next question is how do I set my macros? So if you're wondering how to set your macros, I can't go into uh, exactly... I mean, I could, but that wouldn't necessarily be fair to everyone that's inside of my programs. It This would require a whole podcast episode in itself because there are certain things that you need to know. Um, so what I will tell you is, okay, your body needs a minimum amount of fat. And depending on what your goals, it's really good to be mindful of your protein intake. Protein is an essential macronutrient. Fat is an essential macronutrient. Carbs are not an essential macronutrient, but some, you know, sometimes you need them to keep your blood sugar stable. You know that, but, um, you really want to make sure your body's getting enough protein and enough fat every single day. When it comes to setting your macros, there's a few different ways to do it. I would not use a, one of those calculators online because it, they don't dive in to all of the, like, it just gives you like a basic thing, right? Like it, and Ben, my really good friend, Ben Zeal, he, I think he posted an, an IG video on like why you shouldn't use macro calculators. So, um, check out his IG cause I think it's on there, <laughs> but I'll link to it in the show notes too. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. But if you are interested in knowing step-by-step step how to set your macros for your body and to keep your blood sugar stable, then this is what I teach inside of my program. I teach it inside of my fat loss for type ones and my shredded body for type ones program. So if you want to check out shredded body for type ones, it's open. You can join at any time. Um, as a loyal podcast listener, you do receive 10% off using the code more than just a type. So check it out. Go to diabeticfitnessworld.com forward slash join. I will link to it in the show notes, but my program teaches you everything that you need to know about counting macros and keeping your blood sugar stable in the process. And, um, yeah, if you go to that page, you'll find all the details about it. There's one other thing I was going to say about macros. Um, but yeah, it's so individualized. So definitely check that out. And um, let's see. Next question is how high should protein be for blood sugar management? So um, for blood sugar manage management specifically, I mean, your body does need a minimum amount of protein every single day for your body individually. So it's important to kind of figure that out first, what that number is for you based on your body weight and everything and what your goals are. And then I would kind of just take that amount per day and then break it down for your meals, right? Because you want to make sure you're maintaining the minimum amount of protein for your body, but then when it comes to blood sugar management per meal, we're all going to be affected slightly differently. And I did, I made this like, uh, what do you call it? Um, like a thing for social media, like a while ago, let's see if I can find it. But yeah, um, if you're consuming generally, this is the guideline. If it's between 75 and hundred grams of protein, um, in one meal, it could increase your blood sugar, like 20 grams of carbs would. So that's a basic um, guideline. For me personally, I mean, there's so many things that go into account with that because if you've just had a good workout, like <laughs> it's you may not find that to be the case at all. Um, for me, I typically will be mindful of protein if I'm consuming more than like 56 grams of protein in one meal. I'll probably give myself a small bolus unless, you know, my workout is around that time and then I'm more insulin sensitive. So yeah, it, it just really depends what your day looks like, what you're doing, how much body fat you have um, to really 
take into account like how much protein when it comes to managing your blood sugars. But typically if you take that guideline of like 75 to 100 grams of protein, just know that might increase your sugars and then kind of figure out what works best for you. That would be my, my take on that. Blah. I think this is the last question. Yes. So, um, still in the honeymoon phase, two and a half years after diagnosis, where do I even start? Um, yeah. So where to start when it comes to counting macros? Um, well, there's my program. (laughs) Obviously that's a good place to start. Uh, shameless plug there, but in general, I would really, I, I would, find a source, you know, it doesn't have to be my program. It can just be any source that you trust when it comes to macro calculations, right? Like you want to make sure whether that's like getting a program. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of probably other stuff that you can buy. I'm trying to think of like, you know, other people in the fitness industry, but do your research, right? Like you, you don't want to just base your macros off of a calculator, but then I would say, you know, you want to know what your goals are. So first question, what are your goals? Find a way to figure out how much food and macros your body needs based on those goals that you have. So check out my program if you want, or find like another source that will kind of guide you in that direction. Because again, we're all, we're all made up so differently. So you really want to make sure that you're looking at your macros as an individual. And then when it comes to your blood sugars, like I would, I did this at the beginning, but just monitor your blood sugars around like things that you're eating. It helps, you know, once you start counting them from a fitness perspective that you are also being mindful of your blood sugars while doing that, because then you can be like, oh, like this amount of fat is increasing my sugars, you know, and then you can kind of get to know your body on such a deeper level just by doing that, by building that awareness when it comes to, you know, your fitness goals in general. So they kind of go hand in hand, but you do build a lot more awareness when it comes to your body. And so if you've been newly diagnosed and you want to know where to start when it comes to counting macros, first, what are your goals? And then once you figure out your macros, like find a a source to calculate them. I mean, depending on what your goals are too, if you're monitoring changes in body weight, then you'll kind of get an idea, right? Of like what you're doing. But then on the diabetes side, once you're counting your macros, even if you just take my fitness pal and you're like tracking everything that you consume, like say you don't find that source, you don't invest in a program, but you just start tracking your food intake, you know, be mindful of what your blood sugars are doing around those amounts that you're eating for that meal. And that will give you so much more insight of like what you're what you need to do differently or what you are doing based on, you know, your activity that day that worked and you just learn so much because again, you can take all this information and there's so much of it out there, right? But you can take it all, but it's not until you start applying it that you really learn. And so applying it and then learning how your body is responding individually is so important. So Those are all the questions today. I hope that you found this episode helpful. And if you have questions about macros that maybe weren't answered on this episode, don't hesitate to reach out. I am here. I'm an open book and I would love to answer your questions. You can send me a DM on Instagram at Taja Kato. I love you and I will talk to you very soon. Thanks for tuning in. Bye for now.